Carol, the Renault-Nissan Alliance plans to launch up to 20 different vehicle lines with autonomous driving functions by the year 2020. That's according to CEO Carlos Ghosn. He is also predicting that auto sales this year will blow past analyst expectations. And the star of this year's New York Auto Show is the new Nissan GTR sports car that is on screen. They're calling it Godzilla. Carlos Cohn is joining me right now, live here on set. Carlos, good to see you. Good to see you, Maria. This is really exciting. I've got to talk to you about so many things. Launching 20 new vehicles uh, by 2020, and then this Godzilla sports car. Tell us about it. Why is it Godzilla? Look, sports car attracts a lot of attention always, even though they represent a very small percentage of our sale and of our business. I mean, we sell 2,500 Godzilla a year, over 5.5 million cars sold every year. So wow. it's a very small percentage of the business. But a lot of attention, a lot of emotion, a lot of motivation. It's a kind of flagship for the brand, so that's why it's important. And it looks absolutely gorgeous, and that's why everybody flocks to it. So is bigger sort of a trend now, once again, at the auto show? What, what are the hot trends going on right now? I know you've got some bigger cars, too. Yeah, well, uh, the first trend is crossover SUVs. There is exactly. a lot of attention, uh, not only in the United States, by the way, that in the, we're seeing the same phenomenon in China and in Europe. Crossover are taking a much bigger part of the, of the industry. Second, you have everything which is around electrification and autonomous car and connected cars. That means this is the, uh, there is a lot of technology coming in this direction because there are so many benefits for the consumers. Yeah, I want to yeah. talk to you about that because autonomous and, and uh, driverless cars, really, that's all we talk about, I feel like. But let's talk first about, about electric cars, the LEAF, uh, obviously the world's best-selling electric-powered car. Is this finally gaining traction, Carlos? It is gaining traction globally. Now, uh, let's not forget that, you know, from time to time, you're going to have some slowdown, then some recovery depending on the battery range, depending on the price of the car, depending on what states is going to be supporting electric, electric cars. So we're going to have to be relentlessly supporting this technology because, frankly, there is absolutely no way car makers can meet the uh, regulation and the, uh, on emissions, and particularly on CO2, without a massive electrification of the powertrain and particularly without a substantial part of electric cars. Well, you, you've got to have the infrastructure in place, right? You need exactly. plug-in. But it's developing. It's developing it's everywhere. Developing. I mean, we're okay. seeing it all across the world. We would like it to be faster, stronger. But Japan is massively implementing a, a charging infrastructure. France, Norway, some states, some cities in the United States are doing that. I mean, this is something which is expected from the consumers. Technology is taking over. I feel like you are seeing a revolution in your business right now, Carlos. We do. Tell, I mean, is, is my car going to be like my iPhone where I have all my data and everything right there in the car? Tell well, us that's, what's going that, on. That's one of the reasons for which companies like Apple, Google, and other tech companies are interested in the car because they see the possibility of the car to become a kind of a privileged, connected, mobile space. That's what the car is going to be. In, I mean, and again, we're not talking about 15 years down the road. We're talking about something which is going to happen within the next five years. There is a lot of research, a lot of technology. All the suppliers are moving into this direction and helping us bringing very attractive products. Obviously, we're going to have to be uh, you know, particularly attentive to cyber security exactly. because that was my know, next question. Exactly, this is something which is making our development a little bit more cautious to make sure that we are paying attention to a development that could be immune in a certain way to cyber uh, attempt, uh, attempts. But I'm very optimistic about this because there are so many benefits behind that. Because if I have all my information in my car, if my car gets stolen, I'm in big trouble. Yeah, but, but the fact that you have a lot of information in your car and you're going to be able to uh, connect internet, do video conferencing, do a lot wow. of things, and then give the power to the car to drive while you're doing all of this because that's what autonomous cars is about. Autonomous cars, there is a lot of confusion between autonomous cars and driverless cars. Driverless cars, there is no driver in the car. This is a completely different technology. Autonomous car is you're in the car and you decide whenever you want to drive and whenever you don't want to drive. And whenever you don't want to drive, you can do something else. That's where connected car plays, and you can do it in a very safe condition. That makes a lot of sense, and it sounds like it's a huge opportunity for the industry. You said the, the industry will sell many more cars than people are expecting. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you got folks like Uber saying, no, 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 people will buy fewer cars. Why are you seeing such a different story than these technology guys are saying? Well, uh, because uh, I mean, there is no doubt on the fact that shared cars 
are going to be increasing. But they're coming from such a low level. Today, less than 1% of the cars sold in the world are shares. We sell 85 million cars every year, less than 1% are shared. So the fact that they're going to be increasing from the level where it is today, no doubt about it. Is this going to represent a substantial part of the industry? I doubt it. And one of the reasons for which I doubt it, uh, on top of the present behavior of people who want to have their own car, the connectivity of the car is going to make the car a very intimate place where you're going to have your own mails, photos, videos, etc. And you don't want to share this with anybody. Yeah. Let me ask you real quick before you go. The majority of cars are made in the U.S., right? Because Donald Trump is out talking about the fact that we are always on the, you know, the, the bad end of all trade deals. And he pointed to Japan that they're selling all these cars. But most cars are produced in the U.S., right? Even, even international automakers. 85% of the car we sell, 85% of the car Nissan, sell in the United States are made in North America. And I'm going to tell you why we're doing that, because we don't want to take any foreign exchange risk. You've seen, for example, that the yen for the last three years uh, or four years moved from 75 yen to the dollar to 123 yen to the dollar to 111 yen to the dollar. Wow. So it's impossible. You can't take that kind of risk. Exactly. I mean, you cannot make a planning, a serious planning with such a variation. So the only prevention for this uh, is localize your production. And that's what we're doing. And we're doing it practically on all, all the region and particularly North America. And I know you are. You've created a lot of jobs, by exactly. the way. Yeah, we added 9,000 jobs in manufacturing for the last three years. So it is something which is substantial and it is totally logical with our own interest. That's a great story. Carl, it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Carlos Ghosn is the CEO of Renault Nissan.